I'm Joe. I'm Mike. And today we reviewed Tango and Cash. Meet Ray Tango. He likes money. He's a Kong. He's a go. But doesn't bother with cash. Meet Gabe Cash. He won't dance around trouble and doesn't mind stepping on toes. I hate your karate, guys. Two of LA's top rival cops are having a great time staying in rhythm. Neither of us has seen Tango and Cash, so we thought it'd be a good idea. And I enjoyed it. Yeah, I, I yeah. think it's fair to say that we both really enjoyed it. And I think more than that, it caught us unawares. It was very different from what we were expecting it to be. Basically, you got two maverick cops but they're, not, they're maverick cops at the opposite ends of the scale. There are kind of comparisons with their partnership, uh, Stallone and Kurt Russell, in what you might have between Mel Gibson and Danny Glover in Lethal Weapon. Yeah. Slight, slight comparisons. In that they're both at opposite ends of the scale. You got Stallone as Ray Tango. It's not a typical Stallone role, like he's not Rambo or Rocky. Like they've tried to cl clearly do something completely different with him. He wears sharp suits. They've tried to make him out to look an intellectual by giving him glasses, but these aren't just like Travis's glasses, these are like big round John Lennon glasses. Then on the other hand, you've got Kurt Russell as Gabriel Cash. He's basically your 80s everyman character. Mullet, loose shirts, cowboy boots, walks around carrying beer. That's literally the first thing you see him doing. The partnership between Kurt Russell and Stallone is really good. Like, I don't know if they've ever been in anything else together. They played off each other very well. Yeah. Good chemistry between the two of them. Like, we picked up on this while we were watching the film. I really did enjoy the banter. Yeah, it, it, it is really good. The film itself, basically, they're both on the LAPD, but they don't really work together. They're kind of rivals. Like, they don't actually meet until about 20 minutes in. Basically, they're both set up in the same operation by this shadowy guy in this evil James Bond like 80s evil lair who has decided that he can't kill them because that will make martyrs out of them and thus hinder his drug, drug empire. So instead he frames them and they get uh, they go through like a big court proceeding and get sent to prison. I think for both of us this was a big surprise. I was expecting ethnic minorities getting shot a lot because they've been dealing drugs and then those guys save the day. Was, that, that's what I was expecting. It's a very big tone shift. Mm. Yeah. The courtroom thing really threw us. There's a, there's a definite shift about halfway through when it becomes more of the action film that maybe you're expecting. What it is, I think, is they, they're in prison and they end up escaping. And from that point on, it's kind of no holds barred. They're very aggressive. They go yeah. around, they start, you know, kicking ass, taking names, all that type of stuff. But it was such a jarring shift from mm. what it had been. It, it felt very... It was a big build up to the actual film you were expecting. Yeah, it was a cop drama and then it became your typical action film. Oh, yeah. That ending, that ending high five, freeze yeah. frame. It, it, the thing is. They're literally, they've, they've beaten the bad guys by two minutes and they're lying in this ditch with Terry Hatcher. Kurt Russell's been shot through the arm. And then they go up for this high five, and it's a bit like in Predator when Schwarzenegger and Carl Weathers do that like high five and hold it. But they kind of go up for a high five, and it freeze frames, and this big 80s soundtrack comes on, and the credits start rolling, and it's so good. <laughs> oh, I loved it. It's a very interesting film. Lots of the minor cast are recognised. Several of them were in Seinfeld. I think I've mentioned pretty much everything except for Kurt Russell in drag. Which was uh, something to behold. Yeah. Oh, on, yeah. Man. We were saying before as well, like, he has a bit of a feminine look to him with the hair, and he's got these big blue eyes. Evidently, we weren't the only ones to spot that. Yeah. <laughs> there was one pun in particular that stood out as uh, well. Yes. It was. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, like, Kurt Russell and Terry Hatcher are in this room, and she's giving him a massage, and at this point, we don't know that Terry Hatcher is meant to be Stallone's sister. Full of innuendo is what they're saying, you can't really see what they're doing. And then Stallone sees this guy in the window, runs like full pelt at him, and like smashes through this screen door and knocks this guy over. And I quote, and he says, Is this the way you screen all your guests? Is this the way you screen all your guests? Ooh. After being hit through a screen door, it was we had we had to uh, we had to stop for that one. It was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs>
I mean, puns like that make these films well worth a watch. Absolutely. I will watch it again. Not soon, obviously, but... There are sequels, aren't there? There might be. Or oh, if there are... Well, we might be back with those sequels. <laughs> But it, it's a very, very interesting film. It's not what you'd expect. If you're expecting people to just shoot the hell out of each other for two hours, it's not like that at all. You've got plenty of fist fights and things going on. But your main big action scene is the last half hour. I must say, I, I did really enjoy the film. It caught me unawares at the beginning. Uh, wasn't what I was expecting at all. But I definitely liked the film more for that, for you know surprising me. Um, the last little bit was a bit too generic and I felt a little bit let down, but still it didn't take away from the film and I, I would definitely recommend it. Yeah, well worth a watch. So, um... Hope you like the video. Yes, and uh, stay tuned because we'll probably have more for you.